Okay. So welcome everyone and good morning, good afternoon and good evening, depending on where you are joining us from in the world. And thank you so much for joining our PICTAS webinar. PICTAS is a creative community of photographers, artists and creators and we have members from all around the globe. So maybe while everyone's joining, you can let us know where in the world you're from and maybe what kind of photography you're interested in. So um, let's just say, oh, we've got Mexico, Belgium. Hi guys, I think we've got Alexandra and Nick there at the minute, hi guys. So uh, I know that's landscape and um, boudoir. So that's the first two that I can see there at the minute. So in my case, oh, and macro. So Alessandro likes macro as well. I didn't, I didn't realize that one. So sometimes it's a little bit slower. So obviously I'm in the UK um, and what sort of photography do I like? I'm kind of into abstract things. So that's kind of my, my, my thing really. And uh, Marche is obviously in Spain, aren't you? And she's going to be doing underwater. So there's quite a few of you online now. So let's let's get the webinar started. So my name's Nikki, and I'm part of the PICTAS team. And today we have the extremely talented guest speaker, Marche Yabera, talking to you about the magic of the underwater world. And I'm really looking forward to this because I love looking underwater and seeing what's there it's just another world it's so magical so hi Merche it's great to have you here welcome we've also got Matteo online who um is also from PICTAS and he will be able to talk to you uh if you've got any membership questions um about PICTAS and he maybe will be able to drop the contact deal details for us into the chat box so a couple of technic technical things before we start you'll be automatically muted and your cameras are off. And if you have any questions, please could you type them into the question and answer box and we will answer these for you at the end of the webinar. Um, you probably also have the option to open your mic as well and answer and ask uh, Merche the question directly. So if you want to do that, please, please type them in there. So I think we're due to have the webinar last about an hour. And I'm sure you're all going to be absolutely fascinated by Merche's underwater world and her enthusiasm for underwater photography. She's like a bright shining light. So I'm going to hand over to Merche now and I will see you all again for the question and answer session. So thank you, Merche. Over to you. Hello. I hope you are all fine. I don't know if you're seeing me now. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen to show... Uh little PowerPoint. Let's see if it works. Um, okay. Here we are. Well, welcome to the magic of the underwater world. I'm Merce Llovera. I'm an underwater and wildlife photography, photographer, sorry. <laughs> And we are going to talk a little bit about underwater photography, how to do the shot, how to edit, many things. So let's start. This is me. Sometimes I couldn't take the sea lions out of my head. This was shot in Baja California and it was very funny because I, I wanted to have a selfie with the sea lion. So I was like ready. And I saw the sea lion reflection in the dome a little bit. So I knew it was behind me, but I didn't know <laughs> that it was biting my hair, my head. So it was such a funny thing when I saw the photo, I was laughing so much. I almost have water into my lungs <laughs> because I was laughing. So this is a little bit of what I've been doing. My photography career has not been very long. I just started with this adventure in the end of 2009 because uh, I wanted to go to Galapagos and I always wanted to start with underwater photography, but as you probably know, the equipment is so expensive. So every time I was thinking about buying a housing and buying some strobes or lights, I saw the prices and I was like, oh. No, no way, I'm not going to do this. But in 2009, I had a family company and we got a good offer to sell it. So my life was about to change. And 
I thought it was a good moment to start this adventure, which I never thought I will go so far. So I'm very happy and just enjoying the adventure. So I've been a collaborator in the Mother magazine. I don't know if you know it. It's a very beautiful magazine, just uh, uh, done by women. We were 14 women in the first volume. Now the second volume is out. Uh, I was also a mentor in a photography program in Tanzania to show people from Africa how how to take photos, which was a very, very nice project. I got invited there. And then the, the rest of things I've done is mainly contest because I'm a very shy person. So for me, it was like kind of difficult to go to any door and say, no, not, uh, I'm Merche, this is what I do. So the easiest way was to go to a contest, just put my photos there and see if they work. Last year in... This time of the year, it was the first time I got one image in a contest. I got a honorable mention. And since that moment, my life changed absolutely because I met David Dubile, which is like the god of underwater photography. And I was so shy there. I was like, what am I doing here? I'm not, I'm nobody. I, I was absolutely like, <laughs> and I didn't went to the dinner because there was a dinner in the contest usually and a friend of mine which is a photographer she told me you must go to the dinner because you do networking there and I was like no, I'm not going to go to the dinner I know I know <laughs> I'm so shy I feel bad so I didn't go finally and the next day I found a message for one person of the organization and told me hey we were looking for you in the dinner because they did really wanted to to speak to you and I was like what <laughs> So I finally got to speak with him and he just told me, hey, you are very talented. I just want you to say, just continue and just continue taking photos. And that was like life changing for me. So we were talking for a while and he told me that I just should take photos and more photos. And I was like, yeah, but I don't know what to do with them because I don't know who do I have to call or whatever. And he told me, just don't worry, just keep doing portfolio and the publications will come. And he was right. So this was an amazing year for me. So many awards, many contests, many projects. This is some of them. <laughs> some of the things I've been doing through all this last year, which is a lot and much more than I was expecting for sure. And after this, we just are going to start with the underwater photography uh, thing. This is my equipment. I am a Sony user. I now have the Sony A7R5. Before this, when I had the Sony A3, 7, 7A3, and most of my photos, I made it on with that camera because I haven't traveled so much uh, with the new one. Um, I have two lenses. I don't, I don't do macro. I know I, somebody was very interested in macro. Sorry, I just do wide angle. So I have a 1635 lens, which I use most of the time because normally you don't really know um, what's going to happen. So for the fisheye, it's great if you know the animal is going to come like this close and you want to have all the animal in the frame or if the visibility is really bad, that helps a lot because the less water between the camera and the animal is the better and it's going to be sharper and like more normal, not blue or green. So I love the fisheye, but only in some kind of situations. I have now a Marilux housing. Before this, I had an Isotta. Both are great. And I used uh, also strobes. In the beginning, I was using video lights, but um, because in the beginning, I wanted to take video and photos at the same time. And then I realized it was absolutely impossible because when I was taking the video, I wanted to take the photo. And when I was taking the photo, I wanted to take the video. So I never got the photo or the video because you're just cutting it in the best moment. So I finally decided I want to take photos. So I bought the strobes, which are for me better because you freeze much more the image you you can use uh, the shutter speed slower so for me it has a lot of advantages and as i like to have videos too i have a gopro 10 that i put just in the in the dome of the housing so if something happens i just press the record button and i'm done and i'm taking photos of course, there's many kinds of equipment that you can use. It doesn't need to be a big camera. There are so many small cameras or mirrorless also with uh, lens, different lenses or just compact cameras. There are so many options now for underwater photography, which is good. But I love the full frame, so <laughs> I'm staying there. 
Okay, what do you need to be an underwater photography? And this may, may probably looks very obvious, which it is, but it's very important. You need to be a good diver. You need to feel comfortable in the water. You need not to think about diving. So if you are just starting with diving, just wait a little bit, just get comfortable with it, and then you can start getting worried about the camera and the settings and many other things. But if when I'm going down, when I'm with, with my camera and I don't, need to think about diving so I'm just going down I am just setting everything and putting the straps in the position and looking if everything is working and I'm not thinking about my ears I'm not thinking about uh, putting some air in the BCD I'm just doing it automatically and I think that's the best way also of course <laughs> you need to know your camera because down there you don't have many times things ha happen so 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 fast underwater and also, you need to adjust everything very fast because when we are taking photos outside, we're probably just not moving in a place. Uh, if we are, I don't know, maybe in Africa, for example, taking photos of a lion, we are in the car and just here and you can try different things and you usually have some time to think and to prepare. But underwater, probably you have, you're seeing nothing. There's no animals there. And at some point, the sea lion comes very fast to you. And then it, you have it here, up there, you have it down, you have it in the side, and the light is changing all the time. So you really need to be very, very, very fast. So yeah, you need to know your camera. You need to know your focus modes, the focus areas. I usually work uh, with the continuous autofocus. And if your camera have has some tracking mode, it's even better. But with my A7 III, I didn't have that. But with, with the continuous auto focus, it was working more than good. Uh, also, it's very good to customize your buttons and put the things that you are really using it fast because you don't you're not going to have time to go through the menu and change everything. Even the housing are with all the buttons, so you have exactly the same thing like outside the water. So I can change everything but it's not so fast because you need to press harder and change and you have the animal coming and then it's gone and you have missed the photo. And this said, let's travel. Let's go, let's go through the oceans. This photo is from my, from my first trip to Galapagos. It's not my favorite photo, but I think it's a, a bit nostalgic <laughs> because everything started there. It's a marine iguana. And as you see, the visibility was shit, <laughs> which makes things even more difficult and also in the editing. But the trip is going to start in the Maldives. Maldives is a place I love. It's a mantas paradise. And who doesn't love mantas? Mantas are amazing. Some people are scared because they think they can stitch, but they, they don't. They stink, I think. It's in, <laughs> I don't know the word, but um, so no, they, they cannot bite. They cannot hurt you. They are very curious animals, very intelligent animals, and they really come close to you. They love the bubbles, so they just come above you because I think they see us and they think, oh, look, there's my jacuzzi. But in this case, this photo was taken in Haniparu Bay, which is um, a bay in the Ba Adol. And this happens in in summer, around August, September, and the bay just gets full of plankton, but absolutely full. So it, it gets full of mantas also uh, to eat the plankton. So it's a bit hard to photograph there sometimes because there are so many mantas that your attention just gets like, where should I look? Where should I point? But I think the the tip is just to focus on a little group and just try to follow them and focus on them. Because if not, it's like, oh, Manta's here, oh, Manta's there, oh, what should I do? It's impossible. And they go like in a train and they are eating all the time so you can get really close and you have to be also just careful because sometimes they hit you and they are really hard. <laughs> This is uh, one of my favorite uh, dives in the Maldives. This is not in the adult, this is in the normal for adults route. It's a manta also, but it's in the night. And they put a um, light in the rear part of the boat. So they attract the plankton and the mantas just come to eat the mantas are plankton lovers and they always want to eat. So it's really beautiful because it's like a kind of a dance and you're there and it's really shallow dive. Here I was uh, almost snorkeling, but the uh, deepest part of the dive is like, I don't know, six meters, eight meters. So you can be there forever. I've been like two hours there and it's amazing to see the mantas just there going and coming close to you and then going to the light and 
doing circles around the light, is eating. It's a bit tricky sometimes to take the photos because there's no light. And if you if you have the strokes, you only have light when you're shooting. So for the autofocus could be a little bit difficult sometimes. And if you got video lights, it's easier. But the bad thing about that is the plankton just come to your light. So you cannot see anything too. So half, half. I prefer to do it with the strokes. Here I had at least the... Um, the light of the boat, which makes things easier. But here, for example, that didn't happen. And that the out of focus did a great job, which I'm very, very happy. I'm usually, I, I always shoot uh, in manual mode for underwater. What I do is try to find the best ISO and the speed, because uh, with the strobes, you don't, you cannot go to 500 speed. With my strokes, I can go to 250. So that's the maximum. These animals are not so fast. So maybe with 160, it's fine or 200. And after that, I'm changing the aperture, the F, all the time. That's the easiest thing for me. They're not trying to change everything, which is impossible. And with the ISO, it's not so fast to change it underwater. So Usually in a normal dive in the day, I, I'm around 500, 600, 400. Here, probably it was at 2,000 or more because it was absolutely dark. And another of my favorite dives in the Maldives is this one. This happens in the South Wood. And wow, it's a magic night because seeing mantas eating in the night is very nice. But seeing a whale shark, it was such a big animal just there in the light, it's the same thing. They put the light, the plankton comes, and the whale sharks too, if you are a bit lucky. In this time, it was funny because uh, we were lucky and we were just waiting. Well, let's see if it appears. I really wanted to take a photo of this. This was in my first year with the camera. So it was in 2020, in February. So I was not an expert for sure, and I, I didn't have any idea. But I was just trying, and in this moment, I did have my video lights, not the, the strobes, but I really needed to disconnect them and turn it, them off because um, every time I just turned them on, the plankton was coming to me and I couldn't see absolutely anything. And in some other point, the whale shark just came to me like directly, which was very cool. I got some nice photos from that moment, but also it, it was crazy and it hit me. So I finally decided to turn them off and just use the light from the from the boat. But before that, when we were all so excited, oh, a whale shark has come to our boat and we were going to go in the water and wow, and wow, party. And no, the whale shark went to another boat. <laughs> and we were like, shit, no. So we needed to wait for the other boat to finish the dive. And after that, uh, we asked the other boat if we can join and go there. And they said yes. So we finally... Uh, went to the dive and it was absolutely worth it all the weight and everything because it was a really really magic night and from here we're going to travel to Baja California Sur in Mexico which is my favorite place on earth I've been in many places and of course I was talking about Galapagos and if you die probably you're gonna think this girl is crazy saying she prefers Baja than Galapagos <laughs> a little bit maybe I'm crazy I love Galapagos it's not I'm saying Galapagos is bad but Galapagos is absolutely amazing but Baja it's the place where anything could happen and it's full of surprises and there are so many amazing animals there starting with the sea lions like in this shot uh, those animals are the most funny animals to dive with I think they are my favorite because they are so playful they come they bite your hands uh, if you just do like uh, something stupid they just follow you and they do the same they they love playing and I love playing too <laughs> so uh, it's a very funny place and also in Baja you can see so many different whales orcas dolphins sharks mantas mobulas everything everything so I think it's the diverse paradise or for me it is this was uh, the first photo I got into the contest uh, last year I call it uh, flying underwater, and for me, it's going to be a very special photo forever. It's, it has not only been awarded in that contest, it has like, I don't know, if two or three awards more. So it's, a, it's, it's weird because I would never have put that photo in a contest, but my friend, which is a photographer, I, I just asked some friends uh, in a group and said, hey, can you tell me five photos of myself, of, my, of mine that you will put in a contest? And they all said this one and I was like 
Hmm. Interesting, because I would, I wouldn't have choice, have choose this one, but I did it, and and they were absolutely right. This was shot in Mexico. It's a group of mobile arrays just going. They they really pass very far, very very fast. So I just tried to take some pictures when they were on my side, but I like it, this picture because it's they are just going, which usually. People doesn't want photos with the, with the back of the animal. Always, we all want the, the face, no. But I think this is this makes it special, no. That is the back. They are all flying together. It's the light from uh, just the reflection of the sunbeams coming up like this. And maybe because of that, it's it's special, and that's why they like it in the contest. I, I'm still not so sure. <laughs> And this is another another photo from Baja. This is from reef, and if you're lucky, you can see the cormorants there hunting, and do do a spool of fish. And I was just dying, trying to follow this cormorant because it was going up and down, and they move so fast, and we are so slow in the world. Even if you are fast, we are so slow. So I was with my camera and just preparing everything. And again, the light is changing all the time. Here, probably my settings were. I saw 500, 600, and I try not to use like F4, which is the the widest one. I try to go to six or seven because if you go to F2 or four, the the borders of the of the image will get like not so sharp. So it's better to go to higher F. And the speed probably was 250 because this animal was very, very, very fast. And this was other lucky thing uh, last year in, in Baja, this is Cabo Pulmo. I have been there like, I don't know, I think three times and usually the visibility is not very good, uh, which that's the worst thing for an underwater photography to have about visibility and you need to be very close and for some kind of shot, it doesn't, it doesn't work. But this day the visibility was more than good. Uh, we found the um, the jackfish. They they school like tornadoes there. This is quite normal, but they were almost in the sand, and the visibility was good. And they were doing this shape, which is not like the most normal one. When I was just there, I think underwater photography is just being in the right moment and just get ready and don't miss it because this could last like less than thirty seconds. It just move like this and then it changes. So I think I was in the perfect spot in the perfect moment. I got this photo and this photo has been awarded also in many contests, which I'm so happy for it. I, I saw this photo and I thought, mm, this photo is going to make me happy. <laughs> and I was right. This was, uh, wow, this was, was I, what I call a uh, gift of the ocean. I'm, I would never expect this. This was in February. I was with my family, just a family trip to Mexico, and I was showing them some places, and we went, of course, we went to Baja. And as I was there, I thought, yeah, maybe I can go to La Ventana and see if I find the orcas. And I told my family, hey, you want to join? You're not going to get in the water, but you can stay in the boat and you can see them if we are lucky and we see them and we found like 12 orcas hunting mobulas like popcorn and it was such a special day i was so tired i went in the water like a thousand times and i flew the drone and everything and i like this shot a lot because it's it, i think it shows the crazy moment with all the mobulas just running away the orca in the middle and the mouth open with those little teeth just yeah. This was, it was going to buy uh, to eat the the mobulas. They were eating them like so easily, and I was in the middle. And so many people asked me that, "Where were you scared?" It's like, no, I think the orcas have like really bad reputation, but they have never attacked a person um, in freedom, just in captivity. But like in a normal way in the ocean, it has no, there are no reports of orca attacks, and they are so smart. And so amazing, and they are talking to each other all the time. And if you are there, even if they don't see you, they have uh, a collocation, so they know that you are there. So nothing's gonna happen. <laughs> and they usually even they use you to as a, as an as another spot there, and they know the mobulas are not going to go through you, so they just use you as a strategy to to hunt them. Here I. I think I, I made a mistake and I don't know if I, it was me or the mobulas because the mobulas once uh, just turned my camera off. So they were even hitting me, but they were so scared. So sometimes they were like, 
And at some point I was going down and I was looking at my camera and it was dark. And I was like, hey, what's happening? It's impossible. I charged my battery this morning. It's like, no. And I take it and it was off. And the mobile is probably with the pin just touched the button and it was absolutely off. So I just turned it on. I missed some photos, but nothing very <laughs> to cry. And... And yeah, I don't know if it was me, but the speed I was using here, it was less gifts, it's snorkeling, so I'm not using strobe. So if I'm not using strobe, I'm usually around from 300 of speed to 500 or even 600. And I think in this point I was at 200 maybe, which was a bit in the limit. And this photo was great, but others were a little bit not, a little bit with move, not, not very sharp. Which, well, but that's life. We all make mistakes. And I think the best way to learn is making mistakes. I have never studied photography. I have learned everything by my own. And it's just that to just go take lots of photos, make lots of mistakes and learn from them. That's my, my I think, the best way of learning something. This is another very special moment. Uh, it was also in Baja, but in Magdalena Bay. This is I was not in the water at this time. I was just from the boat with the camera inside the water. And there every year happens uh, a very strange thing is the gray whales go into this bay and they are very friendly. They, they are really looking for interaction with the humans. Not all of them, but many so they come to the boat and they just scratch with the boat and they just let you touch them because they they want that and this was my first time there it was two years ago and we were I was in the boat with a friend and we had this mom with baby like for two hours or even more with us just coming and going and coming up and we were touching them and the baby was coming and and breaching and it was like such a special thing you now that a big animal like this one really wants to interact with you and it's looking for interaction i think that's the best thing the best encounters are where the, when the animals really want that interaction with you and that makes it so special so in this case, I was just with my camera in the water waiting for it to come. And I saw the baby coming and coming and coming even closer and closer. And I was taking photos. And at some point, it just took one hand out of the housing. And the baby just put its nose in my hand. And I was like, wow, I wanted to cry. And I, I haven't seen my hand since then. <laughs> and another example of being in the right moment in the right place. This was in Los Islotes in the sea lion colony. I had a great dive with the sea lions and then the dive master said, no, oh, let's move. And I was like, oh, I don't want to go. This is so beautiful. So I saw some divers just like distracted that they, they didn't hear the dive master going. So I decided to be distracted too. So I was like, doo, 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 doo. so she left and we were all there. And in that moment, three cormorants came with a sea lion and this one just stopped there in the in the light. So I took this photo. The original photo, uh, it's a bit uh, overexposed because again, it's not easy to change the setting so fast. And I'm really fast. I have learned to be very fast, but it was just this light and then all the sunlight here and shooting there. So I just uh, put a higher uh, F. I, I don't know if it was F10 or 11, but not enough. Uh, so it's a bit overexposed, but nothing that you cannot fix after in the editing. We will also talk about the editing uh, in the end. And because you may be saying, oh, yeah, but uh, I, I have tried on the water photography and my photos are blue and they don't look like this. Of course, they don't look like this. You need to work on them. Another funny sea lion. I love these guys. Look at the face. But they are so, so fast. You see the image and you, you cannot imagine how fast they are. So here, 250 of speed and just pray <laughs> for the image to be to be sharp. Another thing I wanted to talk is about sharks. I don't know how familiarized are you with sharks. Sharks have a very bad reputation, even worse than the orcas. But sharks are not dangerous at all. We are in their environment. It's, the ocean is their home, and I think we have to respect that. And they are not interested in us. We, we are not food for them. Of course, some of them are more aggressive, and some of them are more curious, And but many of them are so shy. So you just need to keep an eye on them and... Don't get relaxed you, with, you are with a shark. You just need to look at him like, hey, I know where you are. But 
I have been diving with many different sharks and I'm still alive and I have never had any like feel like uh, in danger or anything like that. This shot was done um, right while snorkeling, but I have some life because in the company of the tours, they told us that the strokes were not recommended for these sharks so they can get aggressive because they re they remain like the fish when the, the reflections of the fish when they are moving. So it's not the best idea ever. But they said video lights were good, so I tried with that. That's why it's the the light thing it has in the in the face. It's a bit better because I was with some light. This was during the marlin run. This is another thing that goes really fast. This is snorkeling, so you just see some action. You get into the water as fast as you can with everything ready, and you start swimming like crazy. And it's very tiring, but it's uh, such an amazing experience. Here, the marlins are trying to hunt the sardines. In this photo, just the morning, just seconds before, just have break into the bait ball. And I love the image because all the, of all the movement of the fish and the marlin in the middle that looks smaller, but it's because it's a bit far. Usually... Everybody that does and that does underwater photography, they they want to have like the animals like very close because of course it's better for the less water between what I said in the beginning and the images are sharper and everything. But I also like these pictures that you're a bit farther and you can see the environment and the whole place. So of course you need to work on them a um, little more, but I think it's worth it. This is another image from the Marlin one. And it's the same thing, the bait ball, it's not only marlins there, it's also sea lions just hunting the, the sardines. And again, if you just see it, it's just the right moment. It's just the perfect bait ball, the sea lion going out. Again, the settings here would probably be around 400 to 500 of speed and the ISO between 400 and 600 and the upper two, the one you need with those settings approximately and other example of the same thing. And again, more mantas. This is, these ones are not the same as in Maldives. These are the oceanic ones. They're so bigger. This is like five meters to seven meters wide. So, and, but this is the same thing. They really love divers. They love the bubbles in the belly. So they come really close to us. And in this moment, everybody left because it, they were so um, hammerhead. But I was with a fish eye and I was like, Merche, what were you doing with a fish eye with the hammerhead? You, you're going to take nothing because they don't get so close. They are shy. And the mantas were like very, I don't know. I think they, they were glad that I stayed <laughs> because everybody left and all the mantas just came and started surrounding me. And it was quite a magic, uh, magical encounter. And I was so happy to, to stay there. And of course, I was with this fish eye because I knew the mantas were coming close. And even the visibility was not bad because this isn't so coral. Uh, but if you want the whole animal to be in the frame, you really need the fish eye here. And from here, we're traveling to Crystal River in Florida. This is not the ocean, <laughs> but it's a really funny place. It's the manatees kingdom. It's full of manatees everywhere in the winter months because manatees doesn't like the um, cold waters. So there are some springs and the water is always at 25 degrees Celsius. So the manatees just go there and stay there for the for the winter. And I never expect to have this kind of interaction like in this selfie. Uh, I did a normal tour just the day before this and it was great. Uh, we saw some manatees, I took some photos, but they were not like interacting with us. And the guide it was an amazing woman. She told me, you need to come to the 6 a.m. tour tomorrow. And I was like, okay, I'm going. <laughs> and I had another tour after that, but I said, I, if I reach, it's fine. And she said, yeah, you will, you will reach to the boat. So, okay. And when we arrived that day, it was absolutely amazing. The animals were just coming to the boat when we arrived. You cannot just jump into the water. You need to go through the stairs and just taking them out of you. And she told me, it's no way that manatee doesn't touch you here. It's like a special place that I don't know why they are so friendly. But for me, it was one of the best interactions ever. This was my first picture of that day. It was 6 a.m. It was almost dark. This picture is like 8,000 or 10,000 ISO. But even with that, it's great. And I, I think I didn't take the noise out uh, a lot. 
But now with softwares like Denoise uh, or with the Denoise of the Lightroom, that is a new feature, you can not, you don't need uh, to worry about the ISO so much. So it's better to have a sharp photo uh, with 8,000 8, ISO than have a not sharp photo with 400. So don't worry about the ISO, just take the sharp photo. Another example of that day, this was so close. This was with the fisheye also, because I, I knew they were going to come close and the visibility will probably not be like best thing ever. It was not good, but the animal probably was like here. <laughs> so amazing. I fell in love with these animals that they were so playful coming. And in some point I have like five manatees just surrounding me and I couldn't even take photos. I was taking some space of me and videos and having so much fun and I had I was like there three hours just laughing through my snorkel and the guide was laughing about me and she was saying oh you look so happy I'm so glad you came and I was like yes this is the best thing ever and I was like <laughs> through, the, through the snorkel so yeah well, I think one of the best days uh, of my underwater adventure I don't know if the video will work uh, but we can try maybe you can see it or not this was what that moment looked like these animals were just coming to me all the time. And of course, I usually don't touch animals if they are not looking for it. But in this case, they were looking for it. They were coming closer all the time. And I even need to push them a little bit back <laughs> because they were coming directly to my face. Like, mm. look at this. This was when we fell in love. <laughs> it was so cute. So from Crystal River, we just go to Turks and Caicos. Uh, Turks and Caicos, I don't know where are you from, but here in, in Spain, and I think in Europe, there's not a, it's not a very known place. I just uh, arrived to that place because I met uh, a couple in Mexico in the liveaboard, and they told me, hey, we want you to take photos of us. And I said, yes, of course. And they said, we will pay you. And I was like, yes, this is fine. So after the trip, they told me, hey, we have a house in Turks and Caicos Islands and there are some whales there. And it's a very nice place. So if you want, we can invite uh, you to our place. And I said, even better. <laughs> so I love traveling and I love new adventures. And I think a uh, good thing about traveling is just to know different people from different places and you never know where are you going to finish so this happened this has happened to me many times that I just meet somebody and after that you have another trip and other thing or an, another project so in this case it was perfect because I never expect that place to be so good for the whales they are not like many whales like as in Tonga or French Polynesia but they are really relaxed so you can get close to them. In this case, this photo, I, I love it because it's just with the arms open and it looks like saying, hey, welcome to, to our home, no? So it was a very special moment. We were in the water for, I don't know, maybe half an hour, which is a lot with a, with a whale. Uh, she she was followed by two males that just want to <laughs> have something with her. And she was just like dancing and oh, like, look how pretty I am. And I was very happy just following. And again, in in underwater photography, you really need to be like multitasking because you need to swim at the same time as you're changing the settings and you're trying not to get out of air because you're like, <gasps> but you're swimming super fast because even the whales are moving slow for them, for you, they are so fast. So you really need to, that's what I said in the beginning, you really need to be a good diver or a good swimmer and also not to think about a lot about the camera because you need to do many things in the same time. Of course, you can use some semi-automatic modes. I don't like them, but they work. Uh, in this case, you should uh, use the shadow speed priority. Same place. Uh, this was super shallow. It was a mom with the calf. They were going slow again for them, not for me. But it was beautiful because they were looking at me and they were relaxed and they allowed me to be there swimming with them. And I think that's beautiful because if they don't want me to be there, they just can just swim once and I have no chance to be there anymore. So I could swim with them from for maybe 10 minutes. I was exhausted. 
and she was looking at me and she's like hey I, I I'm okay with you you can stay here and that's beautiful here I was again with the 1635 this is shot at 16 and I wanted to use a fisheye but I was not quite sure of how close was it going to be so I finally decided to be conservative and just stay with the with the 1635 and the settings are around the same thing probably around f8 uh, ISO 400 or 500 the light I remember the light was changing a lot there were some clouds so when the sun was coming out I just need to mm, put the ISO a bit down if I had time if not only just turn up the f and again it's an example of a photo that it's not the closest one, but I love to see the sandy bottom there and the light, uh, the light just coming from the sun. I think my style in underwater photography is for sure with the with the sunbeams. I love them. I think it's one of the most magical things of, of photography, how they reflect in the water. Another rule that they say for underwater photography is not you don't have to shoot down. You need to shoot always up and you see the the sea and the surface and everything i think rules are there to break them so i also like uh, to shoot whatever the animal is and in this case in turks and caicos you cannot free dive so if you are in the surface that's the only photo you can take and i think it's also nice with the sandy bottom and those two whales dancing like one and the other one they look like a stage with the with the rays of the sun and everything and from here, uh, we are flying to Costa Rica. It was a um, new destiny to me. I have been in Costa Rica before, but not in the water. I went to the Pacific side and I knew there was a big chance to see big groups of spinner dolphins, which was absolutely great. I have never been in the water with so many dolphins. It was also not easy because you would see in the group and they were coming and we were jumping in the water like crazy, like in the Marlin run in Mexico. And you just go in the water and it's like, where are they, where are they? And you just see them and you just try to free dive as, as much as you can. I'm not the best free diver ever. I just can go, I, I don't know, maybe eight meters, 10 meters maximum. So you just go down, you just try to point. But again, like in the Mantas in Hanifaru here, there are so many dolphins that you don't really know where to point or in which one you should focus. So you just try and make different shots and then they are gone and you just need to go up to breathe. So here we have different examples. Some, sometimes if you're a bit lucky, some of the group are more curious about us and they stop and they will go slower and they look at you like, why are you so slow? And it's like, I'm doing my best. But it's funny because yeah, they have so many different personalities. Like, like in this shot, we can see like some of them just going down like crazy, not looking even at me. And two or three just looking like, hmm, what is she doing here? <laughs> so different animals, different personalities, just like us. <laughs> some are more shy, some are more happy to see you there. Some want to play, some doesn't give a shit. It's part of the game. And well, there's some photos that work better in black and white. I'm not a very black and white person, but sometimes it works better. And of course, why not? I, I love to have all kinds of, of photos. The funny thing about this photo are the, all those little fishes that have uh, that the turtle has in, <laughs> below her. Uh, they were just using the, using the turtle as a refuge, as a shelter, because there was a bear trying to eat them. So the turtle was coming very close to me, I think, because like in that moment the they cannot they the bird cannot eat them. I just tried this time with the black and white. It's something that I do many times when I'm editing. I just says, go to, I'm in Photoshop and I look and I say, nah, let's see how it works. And when I just put it in black and white, it was like, wow, much better. It's not like the color image didn't work, but I think it's much more spectacular in black and white. Another example of black and white photo that's one of my favorite photos of the trip and I, it has also been awarded. Uh, it's like the perfect bait ball. In the color version, the fish are so small. This is our lantern fish. They are, they are really, really small. So they get a bit lost in the blue. 
but in the black and white you can see the baseball like much better that that's why i prefer it but i also like this one in in color i was in the surface here and i was waiting for the mobulas uh, to come they were really synchronized so they were hunting and i was just waiting for the right moment to take the photos um i think in this time i didn't went down that's why you cannot see the the surface but I like it like that. And this day it was sunny and the visibility was good. So you have all that sun rays just coming from from below, which is one of the things I, I like the most. And about the settings, it was around the same thing as every time, uh, probably a speed of 400 or 500 because they were moving fast sometimes when they were hunting. And the ISO probably at 600 and F probably six or seven. This one is in color. <laughs> I also have it in black and white. It's the, from the exactly same moment. The mobula just going into the bed ball, bait ball and eating some fish. And this is all the moment the same day with much more mobulas and less fish. <laughs> but I love, again, the light, the, the color, and all of them just going like a patrol in the, in the same time. All these are done with the 1635. I, I think I didn't use the... 8.50 in the fish eye in that trip because I was not getting like so so close and I was scared because we were going out just to look what the ocean wants to give us so you never know what's going to happen so I prefer just to be conservative again and stay with this lens that I know I can have some shots again the sun rays somebody was asking like wow but that's with photoshop it's not with photoshop of course the image is edited but I haven't I haven't just paint the 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 rays they were they were like that that day is from the same day uh, and the visibility was great and the sun was very strong so I, I was just waiting for these those animals to these two animals to to be in the center of the of the race to get these images and this is the last place of our tour <laughs> this is south africa it's a very wild place I've been there like two or three times and I remember the first time I went, uh, the people from the dive center were saying all the time, Africa is not for sissies. I agree. It's a very wild thing. Uh, just only to go out. Uh, I was in the sardine run and when you're going out in the boat uh, with all those waves from the beach and they have some straps in the boat for you to put your feet in because if not, you're going to fly away. Wow. But I love adventure, for, so for me, it was great. This photo is from Cape Four Seals. There are the sea lions from Cape Town. There is not so wide, it's uh, easier. But it's, I think it's the most, not, not this time, but the next day of this photo was the most scary encounter I have ever had. No sharks, no orcas, just sea lions, which I love them and I know how playful they are. But I don't know what happened that day. That day, it was just a friend of mine, the guide, and me in the water. Nobody else. We were just relaxed. I was taking photos. My friend was taking some videos. The guide was there also. And at some point, I felt somebody grabbing my fin, but not like in Baja with the other sea lions or in Galapagos, just playful. Like Meh. no, this was like very aggressive. Like, <laughs> and I thought it was my friend just trying to say something to me. So I just looked back and I saw nobody there and I saw her just very far with the video and I was like, what happened here? <laughs> and then I saw the animal, he was doing a very scary sound, like boom, boom, boom. He was doing that with the bubbles in, the, in, in his uh, mouth. And he was very aggressive and he's, started like moving and coming to me and I was like mm. so I left <laughs> running from here and, and I went to my friend and it's very funny because this friend and I could talk underwater so I just took my regulator out and said it has attacked me and she was like no and I was like yes and she was like no it's impossible and like no it has attacked me and then the guy came like no relax like like thinking we were scared I was very scared and he was like, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. And I was like, no, 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 it's not fine. And he was like, relax. And then the animal just came again and grabbed my friend uh, regulator and moved her like, Phew. and again, that sound, bum, bum, bum. And I was like, <laughs> and then she, she saw it and we were both like grabbing each other, like, what is happening here? 
And then the guy just realized it was not normal. So we started going up. We were not uh, very deep, so we just can't go out without doing any safety stop. We have been there for 15 minutes or less, so we just went out. And when we were in the surface, he said, like, no, maybe we can go down again. And I was like, are you sure? Because this animal was very aggressive. He didn't want us to be there. And he's like, no, 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 but it's gone. Let's try again. Let's go down and we can go to the other side of the island. And I was like, I don't feel like it's necessary to do this. Like, no, no, it's fine. Let's do it. And we went down and my friend and I were just very behind this this guy. We were like, I don't know, maybe 20, 15 meters or 10 meters. Like you go and the animal was waiting for us. So once the animal saw him, it just went for him and finally bite him, which was very scary too. So we just ran away from there and he's recovered, but he has a very bad infection. Even he went to the hospital, but even with that, he has a very bad infection. So that's my worst <laughs> encounter underwater. But the day before, as in this photo, as in, you can see, they were so friendly and so amazing. And it was a great dive and we had a lot of fun. And this is a raggy shark, also in South Africa. This was for my last trip. This photo is taken with a new camera. <laughs> I think it's the, um, the this one and the next one is the only ones. These sharks are, they, they look like scary, but they are not, they are like dogs. They really come very close, but they're a little bit stupid. So they're just going like, mm. <laughs> and it's, it's a good subject to take photos with. Uh, the visibility in South Africa is not good as you can see, but the animal was very close. So that's why I got the photo. Another thing in Cape Town, where the sea lions are, uh, you can also have a kelp forest, which is magical. I really enjoyed this uh, with all the sun coming through the kelp. It's a beautiful place. I'm not talking about the settings because they are almost the same all the time. So same thing, just playing. Here you have time to to try to frame differently and with the with the sun and without and I had a little time playing with it and this is from the last trip where we saw this group of dolphins I think these dolphins have never seen a person before they were so curious about us they were coming looking at me like what are you what are you doing here <laughs> and they were passing me like super fast like hum, hum, hum. and I, because I know they have a echolocation, the same thing as the orcas, uh, but if not, I would have been very worried because it, the visibility, it was, this was the best day of visibility, but it was not good anyways. And it probably was like, I don't know, maybe eight meters. So you cannot see them, you just hear them. And in some point they just appear and you were trying to take the photos and they are passing like very fast, very close. So here the settings were much higher speed. Like, I think I was in 600 and just trying to grab them. And I love this photo because the this one in the center is just looking at me, the other one's kind of looking. And this was just probably two seconds of having the photo or losing it. And here is a little video I prepared with the importance of editing. I usually edit in Lightroom and after I have it, I like it a little bit. I just go to Photoshop to finish. It's not necessary, but that's how I work and I'm used to, so I like to do it like that. And then from Photoshop, I usually go to denoise or sharpen, depending if it have many noise, I go to denoise. If not, I just go to sharpen to get the image even a little bit sharper. And even if it's sharp, just a little bit, I usually do a, like a new layer and I just send that layer to sharpen. Uh, not a new layer, I, I duplicate the layer, sorry. And then, as I don't like how it's, gets just directly for, from sharpen because maybe it's a little bit too much. I just turn the opacity of that layer and I put it down maybe to 80% 80, 80 or 60% or even 50% depending on the image. So now we are going to see uh, some of my images, how they looked before I edit them, which you're going to see that it changes a lot. So if you start doing underwater photography and you get frustrated, like, oh, my images are blue and they are, they doesn't look very sharp or they just look like blurry and don't worry, you can fix that. <laughs> so here we go.
as you will see, the ones that they are close, they don't need so much edit, but the ones that are a bit farther, like this one, they change it a lot. But I think it's worth it. It's not so difficult. It's just learning some tips and you can do that in less than 10 minutes. And that's all. And this is the end. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed the trip and you have fun. Hi back, Nikki. <laughs> Hi. Oh, wow, Merche. That was truly inspirational and uh, really magical at the same time. Um, I guess inspirational because you've shown us what you can achieve in three years from the yeah. amazing images, <laughs> winning shots to being a Sony ambassador. And magical because you're just happy and shining in personality. It's just a joy to listen to you. Oh, and thank I, you. I, I just think it comes through while you're talking and you can feel it in the images. And it's as if to, it feels to me as if the animals are responding to you. And I'm just I'm, I'm sure everybody's going to agree with me. It was just really, really beautiful to see that. And uh, looking at the shots, I kept thinking, oh, I really love that one. And then, oh, no, I really love that one. And I thought it's one of my <laughs> favourite because there were like moments of wonder in a world that we don't normally see. And, and it's as if you've you've opened up that world to us. It's like the soul of the underwater world that we that we saw tonight. It was it was amazing. And then right into the soul of the animals. But I just think they're responding to your personality because it was just a joy to listen to you. It really. Oh, was. thank you. Yeah, I, I have a I have a friend that she always say that that I'm light and the animals love me because I'm. I light. believe that. <laughs> I believe that. I think that happens, and I think you've got my vote for taking over from David Attenborough. <laughs> <laughs> so, does anybody have any questions for Merche, or were you all as transfixed as I was? <laughs> I'm just having a quick look in the chat. So Varney has asked um, about what type of camera protect protection gear you use. Um, the, I think maybe she means the housing. I'm not yes. sure. Yeah, I'm, yes. I'm using a, a Mara Lux now, but there are so many different housings that are fine. I used to have an Isota, which are the red ones that are Italian. And also, of course, um, Seacam. Uh, there are so many good uh, housings, but it's a good thing to invest in a good one. Just don't risk your camera because the camera is expensive. The housings are much more expensive than the camera. I advise you, <laughs> but it's worth it. And if you just take care of it a little bit, you don't need to get crazy because I knew some people did just get crazy cleaning everything. You just need to rinse it and press all the buttons every day if you can to take the salt out, but you don't need to take out the buttons and everything. And I have never done that and I have never flew uh, a housing. So just be normal then don't, don't be crazy <laughs> oh that's great tip so um chelsea's saying absolutely stunning work and a fantastic presentation oh thank you i'm so glad they like them <laughs> does anybody else have any questions I, i'll tell you what i loved i loved the end where you showed us the before and after pictures as well because it's just amazing to see what you can get from the editing uh-huh and to yeah. share that as well with people because it, it it makes it uh, achie achievable to people yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted to show. Know that you will see your photo and you will say, well, my photo is shit. Why doesn't it look like her photo or like other photos? And it's just because you need to learn how to work on the photos. Yeah. But it's not difficult at all. It's just a few things. Yeah, that's that's really true. And just the tips about being a being a good diver and being sort of um, feeling safe in the water before you mm -hmm. start to use the camera. I mean, yeah. It's very obvious, but it probably doesn't seem obvious. That, you know, yeah. if you just want to start taking pictures. And yeah, that's what I put it there because I was like, yeah. I know it's very obvious, but maybe yeah. it's not so obvious to some people. And I think it's very important and also yes. to respect the environment, which I didn't say that it was there, but I didn't say it. Because sometimes when people is just so uh, focused on the camera and the shot, they, they hit the reef with the fins and they're are animals there and it's their home so we it just is. need to be careful and not only be with the camera we, we need to still be in the water with everything else yeah because i i guess if you're if you're scared or you're nervous then they will feel they will feel that and then respond as as you know yeah you, you can you you cannot get nervous uh, well you can get nervous but 
you need to calm down while, while you're down. You cannot get out of the water. That's the main rule of diving. No, every problem you have, you solve it underwater. Okay. There's no way that you go up to solve it because you cannot go up fast because that's very dangerous. Yeah. So if something happens, you just get relaxed, you solve it down, you have a, a body. So if you need help or you need air, that person can give it to you, but everything is down, you calm down. And once you are calm, you go up. It can happen if you are alone, which you should never be alone. And you have to, you have a problem, you cannot breathe, you need, you need to go up fast. But even in that moment, you need to go up the slowest you can Absolutely. and yeah. throw in water, throw in air to your mouth or nose to don't get, uh, for your pulmons to, your lungs to not explode because you cannot hold the air while, you, while you're going up. That's very dangerous too. So never dive alone. <laughs> oh no, that's really good advice. And yeah. what sort of depth do you do you dive to? It depends. Most of the photos we have seen, it was snorkeling or free diving. And when I'm scuba diving, it depends. For example, in Mexico, in the sea lion colony, which is a beautiful place, it's not very deep. It's probably like 15 meters. Okay. All the the action goes in between 15 meters and five meters. Yeah. Uh, for example, in Socorro, where the manta rays were, that's that's a bit uh, deeper, but maybe 20, sometimes 30, sometimes 35. But usually life, it's in the shallower part. It was amazing. Honestly, it was amazing. Um, I don't you. think we've got any more questions. I'm just quickly scanning through the uh, chat. Anybody got any questions or are we at the end of the webinar? I think we might be actually. <laughs> so that was perfectly on time. We did an hour there, didn't we? And it was you see? <laughs> Honestly, Marcia, that was amazing it really was and I feel really inspired and really happy to to finish which is so lovely so thank you for sort of giving everybody that um vibrancy and that sort of energy it was great thank you thank you so much for inviting me I was so happy to be here oh bless you take care and we'll see you all again soon bye okay bye bye